looking to improve your life, brush up on your personal growth techniques, you are in the right place. Welcome to Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to today's show. Today, I have a, a, a guest that was actually somebody I just met, and just from our little bit of conversation that we've been having before this, uh, before this actual interview, she is actually an amazing woman with a wonderful, wonderful personality, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this show. Today, I have a Maxine Harbor. She has a company called Star Size, which actually helps young kids, two, three, four, five-year-old those really young kids into, and I believe it's kind of like a fitness program that she actually does uh, for those kids. And I remember her say something like she teaches them how to do jumping jacks and how to do other kinds of stuff, stuff like that. She is actually a certified youth fitness instructor, and she goes by the name of Coach Maxine. So we'll probably be talking to her about Coach Maxine for the rest of the show. So anyway, I just wanted to introduce Maxine Harbor. And Maxine, welcome to the show. And how are you today? I am awesome, Kevin. It's Maxine Haber, but that's okay. You Haber. can call me Coach Maxine. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And you came as a high recommendation from a mutual friend of, our, of ours. And we had a, a phone conversation and just from just your, to talking to you on the phone and a little bit this morning, I think you're going to be a phenomenal guest to the show because you, you started a business kind of um, out of just accident and what it sounds like and then it, it then you've developed it over the last 10 plus years so this is this is absolutely phenomenal because i feel there's a lot of people out there that have a skill set that they don't really realize that they can actually turn into a business and you actually are a perfect candidate that actually did something like that so could you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and why is it that you do it all right. Well, I am a certified youth fitness instructor. I created a kids fitness program called Star Size, which actually specializes in the preschool age. So my clients, yes, they are two, three, four, and sometimes five. Um, and yeah, I didn't start it on purpose. It's not, certainly not um, where I saw myself when I was in college. I actually went to school for um, a mass communications degree. So I was on the broadcast journalism, uh, radio and television track in my 20s. I ended up in a corporate job working in marketing um, in the telecommunications industry. That's what I was doing in the 90s. And, you know, that's sort of where I wanted to be. I was very happy. I was very good at my job. Uh, marriage, kids, and then all of a sudden life hits you and goes, oh, wait a minute. I've got a, I've got a curveball for you. And my curveball kind of came in the, in the form of my husband originally. Um, we were new parents. Our daughter was about, she was about two years old. She's 16 now, but she was about two. And my husband was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And that was sort of surprising to me how, I, how, how well we, we just kind of rolled it into our regular life. It wasn't a devastating diagnosis for me only because her, uh, my father-in-law, his father also had diabetes. So I kind of expected that it was going to come. So I, it didn't hit me so hard when I got the diagnosis. What hit me was maybe six weeks later, my husband was doing his usual Sunday night routine, which since he still has diabetes, he still does to this day. Sunday night, he goes through with all of his little pill boxes and puts all of his pills together for the week. And he was in the middle of doing this routine and he just kind of offhandedly said to me, you know, how, how is it that, that we're going to handle this if this was to happen to our daughter? And that was, that was my moment of clarity. I realized, okay, this is genetic. We're talking about grandpa, daddy, and now daughter. It was super possible for this to be something for her. And I went into mommy mode and went, I went researching. I wanted to find out what the likelihood was and what I actually discovered was how prevalent issues like diabetes, like high blood pressure, like um, you know high cholesterol, like obesity were in children under the age of five that this wasn't as much of an issue 10, 20, 30 years ago, but it was suddenly something that has now become the forefront. And this was over a decade ago when I actually started getting into this information. And the only thing I could just look, what I could look for was how do we get ahead of this? How do we prevent this? How do we prevent 
the sedentary lifestyles that are primarily the, um, you know, the reason that children are having all of these, these health issues at such a young age. And that was what led me to leave my corporate job, leave corporate America, go find a completely new education, become certified as a youth fitness instructor and learn, you know, it's not just what they eat, but it's what they do. And I was overwhelmed with how, you know, it's not just that we're too busy to let our kids go out and get a uh, get get physical uh, education or, or have physical activity it's it's so much more more um there's so many more societal factors that come into play honestly um we we live in an era where we're afraid fear is a big big factor in why kids at a very young age at, literally between the ages of two, three, four, and five, like that is where kids, a human being's natural desire is to be fit, is to be active, to, you know, to actually move. We, you can't, you ask any mom of a three-year-old how hard it is to get her kid to stop moving. It's because three-year-olds naturally want to move, but we don't give them, they're, they're, kids by and large are really not getting as much physical activity as they should out of fear because we don't let them play in the backyard. We're scared they're going to hurt themselves. We don't take them to the park because we don't know who they're going to encounter. You know, we don't take them to the play spaces because, oh, it's too expensive. Um, we don't let them play out in, you know, in the front yard or in the street because they might get abducted. A lot of it is fear-based. And then, 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 yeah, there is opportunity based. You know, a lot of moms that have those kids that are, that are in those age groups, they're just not, um, they don't want them playing in the house and bouncing around on the furniture and doing all of that. It's, can you just sit down for five seconds so that I can get the laundry done or, or whatever it is that we're working on? And, you know, so there's that. And then you transport, you, you, you translate this into how it actually um, exists in a preschool setting. It's even more, it's so depressing. Kevin, we're, we're literally training children whose default setting is to play. We're training them to sit, sit, sit down, sit, sit at this table, sit in this, you know, sit on the floor, sit, just sit still because the mindset, and I understand this is to train them in, in the way of like what it's going to be like when they start going to school, kindergarten, first grade, all of that, when they are expected to sit still. And um, I get that, but there needs to be a balance. In all of what we do, there needs to be a balance. And I think that one of the greatest things about Star Size that I've been able to provide over the years is that balance. Yes, we want them to sit down long enough to understand. We want them to sit down long enough to, to pay attention, to learn, to, to be educated. But at the same time, there needs to be a balance where they're off and they're playing and they're getting that creative and they're getting that physical and they're getting that heart rate and they're having fun doing it. Because that's the trick. That is the That is the... Not the trick, but that is the goal. I don't want children to think, oh, I have to work out. Oh, I have to get this physical activity in. I have to do this. Our goal at Star Size is to teach children that fitness is fun. Because as long as they know in their mind that this is fun, then it's something that they want to do, not something that they have to do. Because Kevin, let's be honest, if you and I have to go to the gym, See how I even just phrase that as have to? Have to, yeah. But I'm not going to lie. I haven't been inside a gym in all the, well, I work out with kids for a living, so I don't have to. But if I had to be in a gym, I know myself. I need a friend. I need a, a, my phone. I need headphones. I need music. I need a TV, a book, something to get me through that 30 minutes or half hour workout or one hour workout because it's so monotonous. It's, it's already been ingrained in me that this is something that I have to do. And I don't. I, I, my goal is to get to children before that have to mindset kicks in, teach them that it's fun and it's something that they want to do, something that their bodies want to do already. I'm just trying to give them that connection between the mind and the body. The body already wants to work out. The body already wants to be physically active when they're three and four. I'm just bringing in the mind to go, that's right, this is fun. So, so Maxine, it sounds like that you've been, because of your concern with your daughter, uh, possibly having this, uh, the, the, the diabetes, because it's, it's something that's been running in your husband and his family, that this is what, this was, was that the catalyst for you to start with, with what you're doing right now? Absolutely. Uh, actually, she was sort of the inspiration for the name of the business as well. Uh, my goal was to make sure that she didn't 
have to suffer with diabetes, that it wasn't going to be an issue. I learned that it was a much larger issue and I realized that I needed to make sure that she was also not going to fall prey to the obesity and um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, other issues that come with sedentary lifestyles. And it became much more of a mission than just taking care of my own children. But this was something that needed to be heard by as many parents and adults and teachers as possible so that we could get the message out and protect as many kids as possible. So that's where Star Size came about. I actually, you know, I took that education that I learned. Uh, certainly, you know, got a job in my industry and um, I decided that I wanted to be able to impact people more on a personal level instead of just taking someone else's program and putting, you know, kind of my spin on it. I wanted to develop something from my heart. And that's where Star Size came from. And again, I give my, my daughter credit for the name of the company. Um, Star stands for smart, talented, athletic, respected. And it's an acronym that I developed literally on the drive home from preschool one day with my daughter. Um, it just naturally came from a conversation that we were having. It was, it was October, and I remember this because the conversation was, hey, what are you going to be uh, for Halloween? Because I said, what were you doing in, in school today? What did you learn today? Oh, we talked about our different Halloween costumes. And I said, okay, so what is it you want to be? And I'm, I'm a very, um, you know, girl power type of girl, so her answers were so disheartening to me. Kevin, everything out of her mouth was, um, rock star, pop star, movie star, you, you know, not that there's anything wrong with those aspirations, and certainly it was just a, you know, a Halloween costume, but in my mind, I felt like she was giving me these very um, surface or empty uh, definitions for this word star, like she had, she had an, a definition attached to this word that I didn't necessarily feel was, um, it wasn't productive. So the first thing I did was I took that word back and I said, okay, if we're going to keep using that word star, we need to give it a, a, a healthier definition, something a little, you know, something mommy likes a little better. And um, that's where the, that's where the uh, acronym came from. So it was sort of a very natural progression of we were having this conversation and, oh, that's the acronym I came up with for her. So what am I going to name this business? And star size just sort of it just sort of came together very naturally as a result because my program doesn't just teach physical fitness and doesn't just make fitness fun, but as the acronym suggests, I teach every child that they can be smart, talented, athletic, and respected. So a lot of the music, a lot of the programs is developed, what I've developed is a program that really focuses on individual development as opposed to um, that competition element because psychologically, children under the age of six, seven, really, aren't re they're not wired yet for that competition aspect. They're still developing. They're still learning themselves. So it doesn't really, it, it's not necessarily productive to take two three-year-olds and say, you know, you've got Johnny over here and you've got Anna over here. And Anna is doing more jumping jacks or faster jumping jacks than Johnny. It's not necessarily um, as productive for Johnny for me to say, hey, Johnny, why don't you do it better like Anna? No, it's, hey, Johnny, you did three jumping jacks. Good for you. That was awesome. Let's see if you can do more. It's about individual development. And that's one of the, the core tenets of the program is not to teach them, hey, let's be competitive with each other. Let's respect what each other can, what each person can do, but let's focus on ourselves and see what we can do to build and develop ourselves. Okay, fantastic. And and uh, you, you like to stick with that one age range? You, you don't want to go I any older than that? Or is that just... No, no. Six is like my... <laughs> six is like my limit. Here's the thing. I'm a big three-year-old. One of the biggest reasons I feel over the years that my business has been so successful is because it's not just monkey see, monkey do, but the monkey that they see is, is me. And I'm a big three-year-old. So I think three-year-olds get me because I'm just a much larger version of them. Um, when I get, I'm, and I, I can tell you this one from experience, the music that I've developed for the program and, and the activities are really, they're, they're, um, they're specifically designed for the gross motor skills that children in those age ranges can master and, you know, can accomplish. There's, there's no greater uh, physical range in a human being's life um, in, on an annual basis, you know, because kids go through their, their milestones before they 
you know, from birth to about like 18 months, their milestones, you're, they're hitting them literally every three to four weeks. You know, you're rolling over, you're sitting up, you're holding up your head, you're crawling. Those things happen on a near monthly basis. But once kids get to about 18 months and they're not just walking, but they're running and they're moving quicker, then, you know, we're talking about gross motor skills and what a two-year-old can do versus what a three-year-old can do versus what a four-year-old can do physically those annual you know milestones are are it's unbelievable what they're able to pick up and what they're able to do once they hit five they've got no use for my program because they <laughs> they've mastered all they, they, they've done all this stuff they're ready for kindergarten and kickball and and then they really are they're ready for group sports and they're ready for uh, that competitive mindset so yeah I really do focus on that age range because I know what exactly they can handle my program isn't just designed to um, cover th their mindset and also so their gross motor skills, but it really speaks to um, their attention span. The way that the program is developed, it's designed to change. Everything that we're doing literally changes every two to three minutes because I know that at that age, that's where the, their minds are like squirrel, literally. <laughs> And I have, I've developed the program to keep up with that. It's, you know, and also, it, it also keeps up with the way that a child works out. A, a, a child in that age range, age range, a preschooler is more of, um, they work out, they're circuit trainers. You know, their, their bodies are developed to, hey, let's do this. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do this activity, we'll go hard, and then we're done, and we'll go do this activity, and we'll go hard, and then we're done. You know, the, the way that the program is designed literally goes with the natural flow of a child and how a child actually thinks and, 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 and moves. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's, that's, that's awesome. And now, do you ever follow your, with the kids or with the parents of the kids, let's say, two, three, five years later, or what kind of? Absolutely. Uh, one of the first schools, when I first, first started this program, one of the first preschools I was in, um, and I remember I lovingly called, the, the name of the school is Beth Mosha, but I used to call them my Monday school, <laughs> because the way the program works, it's weekly. So I'm in, I would go into that preschool, and I would teach those classes every week on the same day, at the same time. And um, I was with them, they, they were a client of mine for five years. So I had you know, multiple uh, uh, situations with kids where they started out and I was there, they were two. And then they were in my class again, the next year they were three, and then they were four, and then they were five, and then they were off into, you know, kindergarten. And I've actually been, you know, blessed to see the, the, the progression of a child who's been in my program for multiple years and see them have that growth. And that is more than anything else I love so, you know, that's why I do what I do with so much passion is I actually have the, the opportunity of seeing kids do that, like, have, like see the light go on and see them go, oh, I know I can do this. And I know how to, you know, I, I understand how to, you know, I, you know have that self-confidence. Self-confidence is a huge thing that um, when, when, when children are at that super young age, to be able to see. For them to accomplish it is one thing, but for me as the as the educator to actually see it, that's like that's like cotton candy to me. <laughs> you know, actually getting to see a child have that moment of of recognition that they were that they were capable of doing something and seeing them do it. It's not just the oh hey you've got the right form. No, for me it's seeing the light go on in their head and they're realizing for themselves that they can do it. And I've been so blessed to see over the years that progression with a lot of my students. Um, building that relationship with them and seeing them year after year and and uh, seeing the difference in their personalities and their confidence and their physical abilities and yeah because they know my music and they recognize the songs and they'll come in the class and go hey i know what we're doing today um you know based on how i would set the room up for a particular class um i've actually had the opportunity to see that and it is the greatest thing ever um i actually have more interaction with my students than i do with the parents and the adults but it does happen and um one of the what's funny to me is that if i'm not um if I'm not working with a parent directly to, to um, produce their child's birthday party, most parents don't really get to see me until the end of the school year because what I do is during the school day. So I'm just another specialist in a particular preschool. So parents don't necessarily know me as a main teacher, but they do hear about me an awful lot because I've had um, 
what happens quite often is at the end of the school year, the, the school, the school um, director will put together um, a showcase at the end of the school year for all of the parents to come in. Not, like, not, not unlike a graduation ceremony, a little less formal than that, but it's an opportunity for all of the parents to come in and see what their kids have been learning all year and they do like a show. And one of the things that they showcase will be the specialists and I, I'm you know, obviously on board to be one of those. And when I get to go on stage or in front of the classroom or however the you know, different preschools set it up different ways um, to do a demonstration with their students uh, in front of the parents and let them see what it is that we been doing all year long and get their uh, you know attention to go okay they're not just learning great stuff you know uh, intellectually but this is what they've been learning physically I love that that's like the greatest thing ever because it's it's a surprise these parents really have no idea aside from you know the few flyers and brochures that they get sent home in their daughter their daughters or sons backpacks to say hey you know coach Maxine and star size is teaching your child x y and z which is just an overview they get that and that's great, but for them to actually see in person what it is that are, I've been working on with their children all year long is awesome. Uh, because after, after you know, showcases are over, I get parents coming up to me and going, you're Coach Maxine. And I'm like, yes. No, you don't understand. My son won't miss a Wednesday because you come in on Wednesdays. And it doesn't matter how he's feeling. He gets up and he can't wait to go because it's Coach Maxine day. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great to actually get that connection finally with the parents um, in, in that sense, because that lets me know that there's an impact beyond just those 30 minutes in that classroom setting that I have with their student, uh, with, with that group of students. I know that what I'm doing is actually lasting and it's actually going home with them and they're enjoying it so much that, that they are going home and telling their parents. And then their parents will finally come to me and say, hey, I know who you are because my kid won't shut up about you. <laughs> Which, you know, I love that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It is a little bit of an ego boost, but honestly, outside of the ego, it lets me know that I am having an impact and that what I do does matter. And that's, that's very important because um, I think a lot of people, especially people like yourself that are in the school environment, they are just unaware of just how appreciated they are, even, even if it goes unrecognized. I mean, just think about all those, uh, all those parents that don't go to that day or because they have to work or something like that, or maybe they're too shy or too timid to come up and talk to you. I mean, there's a, I mean you're going to be much more appreciated than you probably are even being realized. Absolutely. Um, what's great about what I do um, is that I've learned how to, and it, it's exactly what you said, it's, it's that experience of knowing that I'm in that classroom with those students in front of them in person for those little, you know, those little snippets of time. I did that for so many years in the beginning that it made me realize I need to be able to make this last. I need to um, expand my impact. So what I did, so initially I started out with the classes and then on the weekends, of course, you know, doing the star size birthday parties. Um, I needed a way to make my impact um, go broader than just that. So I took the music that I was, that I developed for the program and I was literally just singing these songs a cappella in the classroom and we would just, you know, we would just do, you know, in the classroom and I felt like that was enough. But what I eventually did is, is a couple years into it, I found a music producer, I found a studio, and I actually recorded the songs and created an album, like a full-on, you know, hard CD that the parents could take home and play the music anytime. And now this was professionally produced, and it's got, you know, you know, real, you know, instruments and, and all, you know, all of this great, you know, a greater quality to it. And parents were then able to take the music take it home and then have star size, you know, in the home when they would just, you know, put it on in their cars or at home. And the kids, what's great about the, the music is the music isn't just um, arbitrary songs. The lyrics, I wrote the lyrics to actually walk children through the physical steps of an, of, of an exercise. You know, I have a song called Jumping Jack. It literally teaches children how to do jumping jacks in the lyrics. It's, it's very self-explanatory. It's, um, I, 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 I sometimes I will uh, compare it to uh, the Hokey Pokey. 
you know, because the hokey pokey is you put your left hand in, you put your left hand out. Mm -hmm. So you've got lyrics in star size songs that do the exact same thing. So I was able to expand my reach by giving parents something that they could take home and do with their children. And then that eventually expanded into me filming music videos uh, t t as a companion piece to the music. Now I had music videos so parents could put DVDs in their TVs at home and bam, there was Coach Maxine on the television and then there were the words on the screen so the kids were, you know, secretly learning their sight words. Um, I wanted to make it as comprehensive a learning experience as possible. And what I've learned with the DVDs, with the music videos, is kids don't sit in front of the television and watch me. It's so interactive. Kids stand up in front of the television and do the workout with me. They, 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 it's just as if I was in front of them in a classroom. And this has enabled me to reach more children and more preschools um, that I, you know, because I'm only one person and I can only be in one place at a time, but I've now been able to expand my reach to be in more preschools, in more classrooms, in front of more children. Um, but then I needed the ability to um, bring the family into it somehow. So I created a series of videos and an entire curriculum, an entire package that I called the Family Fitness Challenge, which now is an entire program that parents can can purchase and take home, and you know it goes to their home, and it takes the Star Size program that yes is developed for children, but I've put it together in a way that parents and other siblings, like an entire family, can take the family fitness challenge and work out as a family. Because, you know, and I, like I say all the time, the family that plays together stays together. It's, it takes the, the monkey see, monkey do concept that I always based my business on um, to the next level. Because, and what I say, what I mean, when I say monkey see, monkey do, I don't walk into a group of children and say, okay, everybody, you know, I don't like sit in a chair and then tell everybody to stand up and then reach their arms up. No, I stand up and I show them by, you know, I lead by example. I'm very, um, I'm very, very hands-on. Like if you have a room full of four-year-olds and they're all at a hundred percent, Coach Maxine's at 300. You know, I have my energy level all the way up here. So it's not just so that I can keep up with them. The goal is for them to keep up with me. <laughs> And, you know, being able to put it in the, um, in the family fitness challenge, it, it kind of makes it more personal. It really does bring it home because now it's not just Coach Maxine that the kids are following, but mom and dad are now doing the exercises. You know, my you know, big brother or little sister are now doing the challenge. It really becomes something for the entire family. And that's one of the greatest things about Star Size to me is I'm still able to keep it in that age group and that age range of, of, you know, two, three, four, and five, it's really, you know, the program is really still designed for them, but I've now been able to take it and put it in, in the context of the entire family being together. And, and that's kind of, especially now, uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we're coming up on the, the, the first of the year, and when January rolls around, adults are all making those, you know, those New Year's resolutions and, uh, you know, top three, it's always on somebody's top three is to lose those 10 extra pounds or get fit or get healthy or work out more it tends to be something that's in, in the mindset of most adults. But then, especially with parents, there needs, there's, there tends to be a disconnect. They're always thinking, hey, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to get myself healthy. Where's the rest of that sentence in terms of the rest of your, where is, hey, I'm going to get my whole family healthy. And, and star size tends to be that, um, that shortcut. Uh, where par parents are like, hey, I'm going to get myself healthy, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure I've got these tools. I'm, you know, I'm joining this gym or I'm committing to running or whatever my routine is going to be, but I'm not cutting my kids out. I'm going to make sure that my kids have star size so that we're getting together and, fit and being fit as a family. I'm not just going to do it for myself, but I'm going to be an example. And um, as a corollary to that, I'm going to make sure that my kids have the tools to do to do what they need to do to be physically active and physically fit on a level that works for them. Oh, fantastic. And, that's, and, and this is something that you, that's been developing over the years. It's not something you just, you launched in your first year. This is, this is over the years you saw the need and said, okay, now let me expand this. Because like, you're doing all, you know, like you're saying, you, you initially were doing everything a cappella, so you're just singing your songs. Then you decided to go and record those songs so that they could, <clears throat> so that you can have a curriculum that they could even take home with them. Then you, developed the videos didn't you so this has been a progress over the last few years 
Oh yeah, this is this is definitely <laughs> it's amazing. I I still to this day I'm so impressed with you know when I look back at you know where it is now versus where I first started out. Um, you know, I'll give you a great example. I am you know for those of us who can see, I'm wearing a, a great shirt that has my logo embroidered on it. When I first started out 11 years ago, um, my first shirt was a yellow, a plain yellow t-shirt that I bought for $4 from Michael's Craft Store. And the logo was something, you know, it wasn't even screen printed. I literally went to Office Depot and bought those um, iron-on um, sheets. And I took my logo and printed it backwards on a screen, on, a, on an iron-on sheet that I printed in my home computer. And then I took it and I literally ironed it on to this big plain yellow t-shirt. I started out you know, with literally nothing but my education in terms of all of the branding and the logos and the website and my social media presence and, and all of, you know, what that all came, you know, over years of developing this program. So much of what the program is now, people have, you know, that are first hearing about it now, they go, oh my goodness, your program is so amazing. And I'm so, you know, grateful for that. And I'm always appreciative. Um, but I'm forever humbled because I know, you know where I started. I know where it came from. I know that you know it, some some of the ups and downs with this with this business in the beginning, because no one had heard of me. It was a challenge to get into preschool. So I'm always you know grateful for that first preschool that took a chance on me. And over the years, my preschool classes really were, um, you know, they were my my testing ground. A lot of what I developed that is great now is great because I know it worked because I actually worked on worked on it with children in actual classrooms and to have that leeway and to have that ability to um, to see what worked and what didn't with those earliest classrooms all of my you know my my students now all of my programs now have the benefit of I know that they work now because of all of the work that I put into them all those years ago okay and now <coughs> excuse me um, one of the things I guess I just want to get into at the moment is because now because we're talking about what you were doing there and I like to kind of steer this a little bit uh, more toward the to, to, uh, to the viewers or the listeners of the show and that's going to be to, uh, going over some of the things that you went through and you know uh, uh, there's going to be successes challenges fat, uh, feedback uh, setbacks and things like that so tell, tell me a little bit about what because it sounded like you started off on a very humble budget and you just you just got started, you got into that first uh, preschool. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, your early successes? And what, what were some of the, the things that you learned when you were just starting out? Oh boy, um, the, the successes didn't really come very early on. Um, yeah. I would say that early on my successes were categorized, categorized as little wins, meaning just getting through 30 minutes and like keeping my head. Um, there were a lot more challenges in the beginning. Um, let's, you know, for example, like I said, people not hearing, not not knowing what it was. A lot of a lot of what I had to overcome was people not knowing who I am and wondering, well, why should I hire you? And I've got somebody who does yoga. Uh, so initially, a lot of my initial wins would come in the form of doing it for free. And I don't, I'm not recommending that this is what people do. This is not the way to build a business. Don't give everything away for free in the beginning. This is not what you do. Um, but I mean, in terms of, you know, like for example, my very first school, they had never heard of me. I mean, they knew who I was because the, the first school that I, uh, actually signed was the preschool that was associated with my husband's temple. So they knew who I was because we were there every week, but they didn't know what my program was. So my initial uh, conversation was, well, let me just sit with you and meet with you and talk to you about what it is that I do. And then after that, it became, you know, the end of that conversation was, I would love to do a free demonstration with any one of your classes. You pick the classroom and, you know, Let's go in there and let me show you what it is that I do and let me show you that it works. You know, demonstrations are huge in my business um, because of what I had to overcome was, oh, we already have someone who does yoga. We already have someone who does um, in, uh, creative dance, which is, 
you know, oftentimes just code for we just don't really have structure. We just run around with the kids. Um, not saying anything about people who do interpretive dance. I'm just saying in my experience. So I really had to go in and show people what I do and getting those early yeses. Those were big wins for me. Being able to get someone to say, you know what, I trust you enough and I believe in what you're telling me enough to let you show me what you do. And getting to go in there and do free demos. I have yet to go in and do a free demo anywhere where I didn't end up signing a contract. It works every single time. It is, it is the cornerstone to my business um, in terms of uh, teaching the classes. And, and getting that first yes was a big one. I still, you know, remember very vividly sitting in that first preschool director's, you know, office and, and discussing what it is that I do. And I have so much passion for what I do, probably more now than I did then. I think maybe the passion that I had then was more nerve driven because I was excited, but, you know, still unsure because I hadn't had the opportunity yet. And I remember her finally saying, okay, well, let's go see what you do. And it was that wasn't even the yes yet, but I took that as a yes. I said, okay, you know, in the back of my mind, she, does, she has no idea. She's about to be blown away. And sure enough, you know, she led me into, a, it was a three-year-old's class. And um, these kids had never seen me in that environment before. And she gave me, you know, 30, a class is 30 minutes. She gave me 15 minutes. I think inside of 10, and tw 10 to 12, she was sold. I saw her, I saw, I saw the look at her face. I saw the children engaging with me and being excited. I saw the, 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 that classroom's teacher and her assistant just floored. And in that moment, it was like, gotcha. I know, I, it, it was literally, let's go. You know, it was as if someone like, you know, took the car out of park and I was already like, I was revving the car like nobody's business. So I just took off like a shot in that moment. And I knew that I had had something. Um, and I was really surprised how the business built because in, in, in South Florida, where I'm originally from, where I first started this business, there's a bit, you know, this, the preschool directors have, you know, they have their own little community, meaning, you know, the preschool director I discussed uh, my program with initially, she talked to a preschool director, a friend of hers, one county over and said, you've got to, you know, get this girl, you know, Coach Maxine's amazing. You, I don't care who's doing, you know, your yoga, whatever, you got to get this girl. And so then it became, you know, the, the phone started ringing. And, you know, I, I got another preschool and another preschool. And in my, my second year, not my first year, you know, so the first year was just nose to the grindstone, working, 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 tweaking, developing, you know, fixing, improving. And by the end of my first year, close to somewhere in this, in my second year, and I don't, to this day, I still don't know who did it. Cause by then I only had like five or six schools and I didn't know who did it. But in my second year, I was nominated by one of my, one of the preschool directors, um, South Florida parenting, um, magazine is, is like, the, the parent, like the preschooler parent Bible <laughs> for it's, 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 um, it's, it's distributed pretty much everywhere, Tri-County. And once a year they have something called the Kids Crown Awards. And I was nominated and I won um, Best Kept Secret. Star Size won an award for, called Best Kept Secret in the Kids Crown Awards uh, two years in a row. <laughs> Actually, I don't, know, I don't know who nominated me for the first one. And it's, uh, it's voted on by the public. I, you know, I can't uh, influence it any one way, one way or the other by myself. But I actually won um, an award for how great my program is. And then I won that award again the following year. And I started getting a lot of recognition in the community for the impact that I was having. So, the, you know, so here come the wins. You know, initially it was just me by myself with a little bag, you know, like I think it was my gym bag initially. Now I've got bags with my logo on them and they're yellow and they're custom and all this great stuff. So I've got all the branding now. But back then it was, you know, my first, my first uh, speaker was, <laughs> it was a 1974 PV amp that was like, huge and heavy and it was so big that it had like this empty space in the back that I would actually stick all of my materials that I could because I couldn't carry everything by myself I'd stick it all in the back and I'd carry this big heavy thing 
and I had my little, you know, my little gym bag. And this is how I started. This is how I started my classes all the way back then. Now, you know, I've got you know cordless microphones, and I've got bags with logos on them, and great branding, and people know who I am when they see me coming. Um, it certainly didn't start that way, uh, and I and I probably work more now than I ever have, but those early wins absolutely lent themselves to my ability to grow my business and develop more programs and um, getting, getting my name out there and getting the recognition. It really just comes from not stopping. It comes, well, a lot of it is, you know, I believe in myself and I believe in my program, but I have a greater faith for it now because I've seen results and I know my, my, my students are getting results. It's not just, you know, mindless play and oh, let's wear them out so that they'll shut up later. No, I'm actually, you know, instilling values in them. I'm actually making sure that they're they're learning, you know, and they're they're mastering certain gross motor skills. I really am developing um, th these concepts of respect and and I, and you know, not athleticism in the I'm going to teach you to be the next NFL star um, way. I'm I'm really just developing the it's okay and it's actually fun to be physically active. Now, let me ask you this. Um, when you went to the first school and you're, you know, you, you've got your uh, program that you were going to talk to them about, have you had, had you practiced this, your program with anybody else before that? Or was that I, your first experience? It wasn't my first experience. It's funny, when I got my, um, how I actually really came to make it something that I was doing on my own, I got my certification. And I started out working for another company. The first time anyone ever called me Coach Maxine, I was teaching someone else's fitness program in preschools. Um, and I'm not going to name names here, but I started out with another company. And they actually, um, they gave me my schools. They, they gave me my schedule. They said, this is where you're going to be on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. And I was doing someone else's program. And I was okay with that in the beginning because I just wanted to, you know, get my experience. I just wanted to get my feet wet. I just kind of wanted to understand what it was like to be in that classroom setting. So I actually got my experience as an employee for another company. And I loved the interaction with the students, but there were just certain things about their program that, you know, I didn't love. We were using somebody else's music. Like, you know, this was a, this was a company that was using the Sesame Street version of Elmo, You Can Drive My Car. They were using um, the Wiggles for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. They, you know, you know, it was it wasn't a program that they had developed. They were just using the licensing. They had license to use other people's music, and they would they would just pick different songs and incorporate it into what they had as a program. And you know, I remember. You know, I loved the job. I loved the interacting with students. I loved being able to teach. I loved the scheduling. I loved what I was teaching. But there were just little things like that that I couldn't get my mind around. And I would come home and I'd complain to my husband. I'd be like, "Man, you know what? If this was my company, I would be doing this. Why don't they have original music? And what about, you know, you know? I, I just had a hand a handful of things that I would always complain about. And it was my husband who he kind of put my feet to the fire. He was the one who said. Well, you have two choices. You can take the paycheck and shut up, be happy you got a paycheck and just do your job. Or if you really have that big of a problem and you think you can do it better, then do it yourself and go out there and let's, let's see how you do. And I took, you know, I think maybe initially he wasn't so serious. Maybe he was just trying to, you know, get his wife to be quiet for five seconds because I wouldn't <laughs> stop this every day. But I took his challenge seriously. And I, you know, I, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. If this was going to be something that I would do, and, you know, how would I do it? What would I name it? What, you know, what kind of music? And so I started writing the songs, and I, you know, I really developed this program based, I don't want to say I developed the program based on a dare, but, <laughs> but I absolutely took on the challenge um, because I, I don't think I, I think I was content to complain about it, but I didn't have... What it, I didn't have the nerve on my own to say, hey, I'm going to do something about it. Someone else had to put my feet to the fire and say, if you think you really can do better, then show me. And I immediately went into, well, I'll show you mode. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, really, it took me from just being somebody else's Coach Maxine to being Coach Maxine for myself. And, and I not looked, but I was so glad that I did it. And I, you know, I really am super passionate about a lot of the things that I do that I make sure that I do it right. 
um, that I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay. And then now if we talk about your successes, because we, um, one of the things I'm actually just not incorporating into the show is what were some of your early fears that you had when you were first getting started and the ones that you probably overcame or, or anything like that? Were, were, did you have any fears? Oh my gosh. So many, so many. Oh my goodness. Um, a, a lot of the times I would be afraid of the students and that was, that was interesting for me because children at that age, preschoolers have no filter, zero. And it doesn't come from a place of judgment. It comes from a place of, I am just going to be honest with you. I see this. I like this. I don't like that. Children aren't, you know, telling you like it is because they're intending to hurt your feelings. They're just being honest. And, you know, they really, they have no filter and they're not trying to lie to you because they don't think you're lying to them. They're just calling it how they see it. So when I, when I worked for a different company and I was coaching these children, I was teaching um, in these classroom settings, I was teaching someone else's curriculum. So there was no fear there. It was, Hey, I, I know what I'm doing. I got this. I understand what I'm doing and I'm going to take this curriculum and I'm going to teach it to you. And I have no feeling one way or the other about it because the curriculum is what it is. If you don't like it. It's somebody else that wrote that. So I never had an issue or a fear there, but what, when it was my own curriculum, I was terrified. I was like, what if these kids don't like this? What if, what, what if they think it's lame? What if they say no? Um, I really had to overcome that fear of what they were going to think or how they were going to um, react by just going in there and doing it. There is nothing greater than having, like, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, with, with a group of of, of like super honest, unfiltered children where you know you've got to keep their attention. Because adults, it's different. You talk you talk in front of a group of adults and they'll they'll look at you but they'll kind of like blank stare at you, but you don't feel like they're disrespecting you because at least they're looking. And you know, they might look down on your at their phones and you're like, okay, I'm losing them. A three year old will just walk away from you. <laughs> they don't like what you're giving them. They they won't even they'll just like well, those will go away. So it's, it's that, it was that challenge of I'm, you know, stepping out on my own. I'm doing it by myself now. I'm doing it based on what I've developed for them. And if they don't like it, I'm probably going to get my feelings hurt because this came from my heart. So that, that fear was, a, that, that was terrifying. Um, and what's funny is even though I'm, I'm, I'm over these years, I'm really, really good at teaching the curriculum in a classroom setting. I still get the fear when I do birthday parties. Because that, because birthday parties are a completely different animal. I'm still teaching my curriculum. I have a few different um, elements that I've added to it to make it more fun and make it more of a birthday party um, appropriate uh, setting. But I'm still coming into a group of kids that like 90% of them have no idea who I am. Typically, I've met the birthday child prior to the event. So at least I've got one familiar face. But every time I do a birthday party, there's a whole group of kids I've never met before. So I still get that fear. I still get that, um, the butterflies in my stomach as I'm driving to a venue right before I do a birthday party. But, you know, the, the training kicks in and you do what you got to do and, uh, and then you get through it. And it's funny, I was actually having this conversation with a friend the other day. It still surprises me to this day how I will have those butterflies and then I'll do what I do. And then when it's over, I'll like, look at, I'll think to myself, man, I'm still really good at this. <laughs> you know, I don't know what I was afraid of. That, that was awesome. I actually, you know, I actually pulled that one off pretty great because in retrospect, I'll be able to look back and go, hey, remember that one kid that came in and really was engaged and really enjoyed what they were doing, and really came in and were like, you know, front and center, um, enjoying themselves and, and really getting something out of what I do. So the fear the fear is still there sometimes. It's, it's a matter of having learned what it takes to either overcome the fear or, or push through and, 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 and do it. Feel, feel, like I said, feel the fear and do it anyway. Okay. And, and then with so a, not being taken seriously. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm not so afraid of that. <laughs> Well, uh, now, since we talked about your successes, now, the other thing I want to say, I want to talk about the flip side of that same coin. Uh, what about some of your early or even maybe even some of your recent uh, 
challenges or failures or setbacks? Oh, I got hit with those too. Um, I'll give you one that's a super easy one. 99% of my business has always been me teaching in classrooms or, you know, performing at, at, at parties or at events. And when I was in Florida, I had developed over all of those years, I, I, I developed a place in the community. People knew who I was, my, my business was growing, but to this day, it's still just me. I, I don't have assistant coaches. I don't have a staff. It's just me. And I moved out here to Las Vegas um, exactly two years. It'll be exactly two years ago uh, tomorrow. And uh, that was like starting over. That was a huge challenge. I literally had to shut down everything that I had built and grown in one place. And I moved all the way across the country. And two years ago when I came here, it was like starting over. It was nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew my name. No one was going to give me a shot. No one I didn't exist here. So the greatest challenge I had was starting over. And okay, I had the, obviously the experience of having started from scratch when I began Star Size. So it was, I didn't have, all, I didn't have to start completely from scratch. I have my curriculum, I had my program, I have all of you know what I had developed. It was just a matter of getting known here. And that was, um, that was a huge challenge for me, but obviously, you know, I was, I was up for it. It was a lot easier to take what I had already built and then knowing who to talk to, knew, knowing, you know, that I could get set up in a particular um, municipality. For example, I, I actually, um, we settled here in one of the suburbs of, of Las Vegas called Henderson. And because of my experience with previous um, municipalities and smaller cities back in South Florida, I, I, it was very easy for me to walk into the city of Henderson Parks and Rec Department and um, file for you know, file paperwork and get meetings and talk to people and uh, get, you know, my program into uh, the different community centers. One of the, one of the first things I did when I got to uh, city of Henderson Parks and Rec, I got contracted to uh, develop, to, to bring my program and teach my classes at two different parks, uh, 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 community centers in uh, in the city of Henderson. The first one was Silver Springs Rec Center, and the second one was Black Mountain Rec Center. And being able to get my name in the Henderson Happenings uh, uh, book that would come out every season and would go into the homes of every uh, resident to, for them to get to see my name and see my company name was a big boost for my business. And that kind of lent me the credibility that I needed to go to various uh, preschools. Greater Las Vegas Academy uh, has had me out there several times. You know, they do special events and they've had me come out. And at their most recent one, I actually was given an entire room all for star size. And I was able to do my program for all of the kids that came for one of their big holiday emporium events, where it wasn't just a classroom. It was several hours of you know, hundreds of, of families were coming in and out and I was heavily featured and a lot of my credibility in, you know, developing uh, awareness, brand awareness in my local area, I've been able to kind of fast forward it, but it's still a challenge. It's still, you know, going and meeting. It's, it's, it's sort of like starting from scratch again, even though I've got a bit of an advantage from having done it before, it's still that starting from scratch and talking to people who don't know me and developing relationships and building brand awareness and getting out there and doing for free, <laughs> you know, to get my name out there. Uh, but thanks to social media, a lot of that has gotten fast tracked because people will Facebook live and people will tag and people will comment. And, and, um, you know, they, I, a lot of times I find that people are doing for me what I would have, would have done for myself because they like what I do and word of mouth has other parents and other um, park directors and program directors singing my praises for me saying, hey, we had Coach Maxine from Star Size and look what she did. This is so great. Um, so I find those challenges um, a little bit easier to overcome. Uh, but it's something that I think there, there, you always have challenges. It's just a matter of having the mindset that I'm going to overcome them. And a lot of cases, it's having the tools and the abilities to do so. Okay. And the fact that you, you kind of did it once already, so you already been kind of down that path before, you just had to go back in. So, okay, this is what I did on the, the first time. Now, I'll 
I, I could just do that all over again. So, so, so basically any entrepreneur that has a business going somewhere and then they decide they, they need to go do something else. And it's a, and it's a business that's actually where you, in your case, it was, it wasn't something that was online. It was something that you physically were, were, were doing where like, like some, almost like a brick and mortar uh, kind of business. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, that's one of the greatest things about my business is that I'm mobile. The fact that I don't have brick and mortar um, is something that that's always been a choice uh, that I made in, in the beginning. I didn't want to have a specific place that I had to convince everyone to get to. I loved, I love having the I'll bring the party to you um, business model because then I can go wherever I'm needed and I don't have to worry about um, opening doors and locking at the end of the day. I have the freedom to, you know, every day is a different adventure. Every day I know I'm, you know, in a different place and with different people in different settings. And for someone like me, you know, who's not necessarily, I'm not as motivated by having one specific place to go to every single day. I love the adventure of it. I love the, um, the freedom of, of being able to, you know, drive from one place to the other and show up somewhere and do what I do and have that impact and then move on and do it somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else. It's, it, it really, it, it really is a bonus for someone like me for, for my business model to be that way. And let me ask you this, because this is actually the first time I've actually have asked people th this on the show before. What is your next step? What are your what is your what is your desire to do over the say the next twelve months, twelve to twenty four months uh, for you? I love that question. I love, I love, I love that question. That that question actually gets me super excited. Um, what, remember how I told you? You know, this is Star Science is me. Mm -hmm. I'm it. There, there's, there are no other, there's no like, you know, Santa's got elves. He's got a whole army of people that help him make him do what it is. I have none of that. My goal for 2018 is to be able to take my business and build it so that I have an entire army of, of star size coaches. So that I want to, my, my, my business goal, because up to this point, Coach Maxine has always been synonymous with star size. My face has always been synonymous with star size. I'm very much aware that because I'm physically, not just, you know, the face, but physically the face and, and, and you know, the mascot, the star size, that I can only do this for so long. If, I, if it's just me that's doing it, then it's going to end with me. So I'm, you know, 2018 for me, you know, for my business, the goal is to pull back the, the Coach Maxine aspect of it and build up the star size coaches. My goal is to have an army of star size coaches all over the country. And, in, and to that effect, I've actually been developing a curriculum and a format to train in person and to train virtually and to license, you know, my, my curriculum and my program and all of all of what I've been doing on my own and make it possible because here's the thing as much as I love to think that I'm an original and I'm one of a kind and I'm unique and I'm the one that you know puts all I you know I put 200 300 a thousand percent of myself out there and that's what makes star size so great the truth is I know that there are moms young women you know educators people who love preschoolers and and love you know being let's be honest, wearing uh, yoga pants and sneakers and rolling around on the floor all day on carpet with three-year-olds. I'm not the only one. So I, I know that there are people that have the personality, that have the desire, that have the interest, and that have the ability to take my message that fitness is fun to more children. And as much as I love the virtual aspect of my program, I love the music, I love the, the videos, I, I love, you know, the virtual package that I've created, I really want there to be more person-to-person -person interaction. There has to be a balance. I know we live in a social media world, I know we live in a smartphone world, and children are learning, you know, devices as young as eight and nine months old. This is the reality of the world that we live in, and it's not going to go away, and I'm not looking for it to go away. I'm just trying to create a balance where we, where we don't lose the person-to-person -person, um, interaction altogether just yet. And I know that preschool directors are that front line of people that are still having face-to-face -face contact with little kids. So my goal really for, for 2018 is to continue building uh, what, I, what I've been working on and actually execute and actually start training and developing star-sized coaches 
on their own to take this program and actually reach and impact and, and touch the lives of more children, not just for the kids' sake, but for what I know it's going to do for those, those uh, people that choose to become Star Size coaches. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, you actually, you started off by being in part of somebody else's program. So, you know, the, the model works. You just have to, you just have your own model. And you can possibly even use some of the examples of what you did 10, 11 years ago when you're working for the other company. Like, okay, you know, what are the little nuts and bolts that they did? You know, and that way you can, you have that as a, t almost as like as a template to build your business. Absolutely. I, one of the things that I've, and, and you're so right. One of the things that's really been on my mind as I've been developing the program to train coaches is it, what's been on my mind a lot was what it was like for me to be that coach when I worked for the other company. And, you know, I've taken a lot of, there were so many things I loved about the company that I worked for in terms of what I got out of it as a coach, as an employee, that I want to be able to bring to this next phase of my business as I'm growing and building it. But at the same time, there are things that I want to make sure that I, that I do differently and that I do better. And that's really, you're right. It really has been on the forefront of my mind because of the experience that I had, not just because, oh, this is something that I built and I want to make a bunch of little Coach Maxine robots. No, no, not at all. I want to make this you know, my goal is to make this something where, like I said, the children get a lot out of it, but the, 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 the people that choose to become star size coaches are getting something out of it as well. So that's, that's been a big, um, that's really, yeah, it has really been on my mind a lot. Okay. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're going to be wrapping up here in a moment. Um, are there any last little tidbits of information to, so to people that are out there that are coaches that are maybe s similar as you that are looking to grow their business? Maybe they're looking to create a certification program so they can uh, take on, so they can expand themselves. Any tidbits of information that you would give to an entrepreneur uh, on, on this? The biggest piece of advice, and I say this a lot, is to find your support system and your support group outside of your family, outside of your friends. I mean, other business people, other entrepreneurs, find your group of, of find a group of entrepreneurs who have either been through what you're going through or are going through it currently. Because there is nothing, like I love, I love that so much. The greatest thing for me as an entrepreneur, because when you're on your own, like I am, you go through ups and downs that your spouse, your parents, your friends can't necessarily relate to. And because they know you personally, maybe they're not giving you the answers you want to hear. They're not, give, they're not the ear that you want to listen. But when you talk to someone who's been through it, they can relate to you and build you up and you can hear what they're going through and they can hear what you're going through and really support each other. That is so key when you're going through something where you just want to absolutely, when you had like the worst day ever and you want to give up to be able to, to connect to someone who knows what you're going through, to have that support from someone who says, I've had a bad day too, and my day was actually worse than yours. And this is how it was. And this is how I got through it. And you can get through it too, to have that, support system to really build you up is key. I don't care if you find it through a mastermind. I don't care if you find it through an online group. I don't care if you find it through an actual networking group where you physically meet with each other once a week, once a month, whatever it is. I would say as equally as important as building up your own business is building up your business relationships outside of your business. But I mean, friendships and relationships with people that are having the same experience as you. Um, one thing I would also, you know, maybe somewhere I would start. I love SCORE and their business mentorship program. Find a business mentor. If you can't find a group of like minds, find someone, go out of your way, look for it, Google it, search it, you know, ask for, you know, recommendations, put yourself out there and say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, but start with, you know, SCORE. Find someone who is actively looking to mentor people find a mentor find someone in the business community that that you can relate to someone that you enjoy speaking with and vice versa and and get that support it is so important you know you may not get 
anything from that sort of relationship that specifically speaks to how to build your business, but you will get something out of it to build yourself as a business person and as an entrepreneur. And you kind of, you need that in the beginning and you, you may always need it because here I am 11 years later, I have business mentors and I have business relationships and I have friendships um, with my community, with a community of, of entrepreneurs that is just key for me, even if it's just for the feedback or just to, you know, hear what they're going through and say, yeah, this is, you know, this is to be able to relate to what someone else is going through to not feel alone is huge. It will give you the ability and the boost to move forward on days when you don't think you've got it. And, and I fully agree with you. I mean, there's a saying that you are the average of your five closest friends. And, and I fully agree that, I mean, that's one of the things for this show, this uh, Life's Little Lesson show is exactly what you're talking about is I'm interviewing people at different levels of business so that the listener, the viewer can actually go, so they can actually get some, so indirect mentorship you know, from, from the, the actual show itself. That's why I craft the show the way I do is exactly for that reason. And I fully, fully, fully agree with you to have uh, relationships with other people that are also business owners. Because yes, a, a an employee-minded person is not going to understand what you're going through. And as an example, I used, I've said this for years now. Yeah, so, so, you know, say if I'm looking for somebody to, to say to date or want you know to have a relationship with and this i'm having a hard time in my business if the first words out of her mouth is once you go get a job that's not the right person for me it's like if her, her if her if the words out of her mouth says how else can you expand your business to incorporate more to get more clients okay that's the person i want to be with so it's it's, it's that whole mindset shift that exactly. um that you need to be that, that, that you need to be associated with so yes you should have different business people that you are friends with that you have that regular coffee with or having communications with or as you say going to score or like myself so I'm, I'm, so I'm a business coach or i call myself an entrepreneur strategist you know you you know you hire a coach or you hire somebody or you have a mentor to help you through your times regardless of how many years you've been in business like you said you've been in business for 11 years yeah. and and you still and you still uh, look for that because you, you 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 as long as you realize that you're that you that you are never uh, that you never stop growing then you you know then you you always keep yourself open minded to new things so uh, coach Maxine I'll call you by your official name um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you either for your, the birthday parties or possibly uh, they have they want to get you into their preschool or something like that how is it that they can get a hold of you do you have a website that they can go to to be able to contact you. I do. Uh, everyone can get a hold of me primarily through starsize.com. That's S T A R C I S E.com. Uh, I'm also very prevalent on um, social media Facebook.com forward slash starsize, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, and of course, anyone who wanted to get a hold of me directly, Maxine at starsize.com is my email. Maxine at starsize.com. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you for the time uh, that you've been on the show here. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show. And, and you are such a wonderful, phenomenal person to begin with. I'm, I'm glad that the, the people on Facebook or our mutual friend said that you should be on our show because we just started talking about two, three days ago. Um, yeah. Likely, you were recommended to my show about two or three days ago. We started we talked <laughs> yesterday, I believe, and now you're on the show here. So, exactly. um, so I want to say thank you for being on the show. It's been a great pleasure having you here. Thank you so much, Kevin. This has been the most fun I've had uh, all week. <laughs> <laughs> And that says a lot because today is Friday. So, you know, yes. <laughs> and also, um, thank you very much. And I will, I will have, have everybody come talk, talk to you online. Uh, for those of you that are looking for uh, the different shows and stuff like that, we, this will be on our website. And I do ask you, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Podbean, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, even on YouTube. Go ahead and leave a comment on what you thought about the show, and I would be greatly appreciated for that. And give a five star rating on iTunes, that would be also phenomenal. And again, um, Maxine, thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Kevin. Bye. Bye bye.
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit KevinADunlap.com, Facebook.com slash KevinADunlap.author, and on Twitter at Kevin A. Dunlap. We'll catch you on the next episode of Life's Little Lessons.